So we did it. We've proved ourselves wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't be happier. Now, when my brother's friends originally said, yo, we want to quit our job at McDonald's and move packs, I didn't think that it was possible until we met Steven. Now, he's one of the people that are playing the game at the highest level, at least the highest level that I've ever seen in person. And I'm very, very, very excited to introduce you to someone by the name of Steven Conville. He's the founder of Chronic Relief, one of the biggest, the best, the baddest LPs in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to introduce you to someone who's done over 100K in one day moving packs. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Conville. My name is Stephen Conville. Stephen, it's such a pleasure meeting you. Now, a question for you. You remember the first time you made 100 grand in a year? Big year, big year, 99, 2000, 99, 2000. All right, so what were you doing at the time? Man, I was a, 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 a stockbroker, uh, investment advisor for a uh, bank's own brokerage firm. Wow, how, how did you even get into that? You know, I have to give a shout out to my mentor, Mr. Mark Ward. I was a banker for a major bank that he worked at, and he was the regional investment specialist. And he used to come by in his nice suit, and I saw this black man, you know, just doing things and, and people gravitated to him for his wisdom, his knowledge. It was something to behold. You know how people want to be like Mike? I wanted to be like Mark. Okay, so you want to be like Mark. So what yeah. was the first thing that you did? Like, did you know him when you saw him or like, did you get introduced by someone or did you, were you like, oh my gosh, well, who's this guy? Like, Cause it's 1997. And I had an inkling that I liked investments because I had already done my Canadian securities course. I had already done my um, professional financial planner. And that's how I got this job at this major financial institution. Big bank team, big bank. And uh, I'm like the only black guy I've seen. And then all of a sudden, one day, they said the investment specialist is coming in. He'd like to meet you because obviously he wants to drum up business. So when they say a man's name is Mark Ward, I'm expecting like Chad or Blake, you know, a next blonde youth to come in and tell me about his thing. And when that black man, that Bajan, Bajan sunshine walked in, I was like, wow, he just had a little nicer suits than I had and a little older, but still, still young enough that I was like, wow, this is impressive. So when you're at the bank, right? How did you end up making that first hundred? Were you just like a teller? Like what, you said you got your license? Like uh, No teller making a hundred unless they're robbing the bank. Come on, bro. The, the, the real reason I did that, it was because he was an investment specialist and I was a, a branch advisor. So I'm doing investments, but I'm also doing mortgages. I'm doing loans, so on and so forth. But he was only doing investments. So once he had gotten to my head, I left that institution and went back to my old institution in 1998 as financial planner slash registered representative, like a registered planner slash broker. And the institution I was at got bought by a big bank. And when that big bank bought that institution, I became a full service broker. And so rolling into 99, into 2000, now I'm like 100% commission, no salary, and uh, advising clients for the first time as a rookie broker. The, the tech sector was roaring. Stocks like Nortel and JDS Uniface and uh, Mark Cuban made his billion in that year. Okay, okay. So you made your first 100K the same way Mark, Mark, Mark Cuban made his yeah, first billion. I mean, I mean, I don't want to say it's a pigment thing, but still, there's a long way from a, a hundred thousand in a year to a couple billion on a transaction. But he did it big right around the time that I did it big for me. And how did that feel in that first hundred, man? You know, like my mom and my dad, I love those two people dearly. My, my, my mom's no longer with us. Uh, she's with me in spirit every day. But I remember my mom saying, oh, Stephen, I've worked 30 years and I've, I've not come close to making that money. And, and my dad was a school teacher. My mom was a nurse. Two vital employments crucial for society, but you know, there's just not that value placed on those jobs by society, I'm basically doubling. Wow. That must've been a huge shock. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm a young buck. I'm not even 30 and I'm, you know, I'm just doing it big. What did, what did you spend it on? I cannot tell a lie. I had just bought a new house. I'm like 24 because a hundred, I must've made like a 130 that year, 145. Um, and, uh, like, wow, that was, that's like, it's like 400 now, maybe 500 now. Like it's like, 
it's a big number. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, bought, uh, I just bought a house. So I remember walking into Acura and buying that black man car, that 3.2 TL. And I got the little spoiler on the back and I hadn't really matured yet. But I didn't, I guess it's by these standards, I'm about to tell you, I didn't really mature until I was 40 something because that's when I took the speaker box out of my car. <laughs> but I remember getting an Acura 3.2 TL with the competition sub I got added after the Alpine 12 inch with that JL Audio amp. That's crazy. You remember I, it like it was yesterday, yeah, man. man. I, was, I was feeling nice. And I put a legal tint on it and shoot. What do you think like the biggest lesson during that time was? Because I'm sure other people that were at the bank as well probably didn't make a hundred in their in their first no. year. Oh no. So what do you think separated you? What do you think made you different? And uh, what do you think you did that changed it? Changed you know the game what? for you? To this day, I still deal with racism, but depending on how determined you are, you cannot be denied. You know, you cannot be denied. My, my mother made me memorize heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards through the night. You know, I, I, I try to send positive thoughts and, and words of encouragement since I met you, but all of them are about go get it. You know, especially as a man, like if you are a man and you were under the age of 40 and you were working less than 60 hours a week, something wrong with you, something wrong with you. Okay. Okay. So you were working around the clock then. I was working hard, bro. Hard. Now, do you remember the first time you made a hundred in a month? You, you got to tell us the story, man. <laughs> hundred thousand a month. You know, I'm now a more senior uh, investment professional, different firm. You know, I got clients like former Raptors coach Sam Mitchell. I'm doing some charity work with Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. Shout out to my dog, Michael Pinball Clements. You know, managing managing money for, for celebrities, managing money for high net worth individuals. Uh, shout out to my old school dog, Harvey Stenzler. We're right near um, the, the High Holiday. One of my mentors, Bernie Locke, two Jewish men that I learned a lot from. And uh, man, my business is doing well and I'm probably making four, five, six hundred thousand dollars a year. I remember a few nice insurance policies as well as um, I had a good month. And that, that month I remember making, I think it was $169,000 that month. You know what's crazy? When you tell me the story of a hundred in a month, you don't, you don't feel as passionate about that hundred in, uh, in a year. You know, because you made 97,000, you made 88,000, you follow up. So it's the cumulative. It's like, you know, I'm making half a million dollars a year. I'm making 400,000 a year. I'm making 600,000 a year. So at that point, I'm really driven. I want to make a million. It's like when the Golden State Warriors won all those games, but they didn't win the championship. So if I could have sustained 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, and made a million dollars in a year, I would have been more stoked about my accomplishments than making a hundred thousand in a month. You kind of get what I'm saying? So it, seems it, like, it seems like you set the bar pretty high for yourself. You know what? It doesn't matter whether it's in your career, whether it's in your recreation, the key to everything is consistency. If you made a hundred thousand in a month only once, it's like, who cares? In my opinion. It's can you do it again and again and again and again, right? Do you remember your woman's birthday once or are you consistent? Do you pay for dinner once or are you consistent? When you live your life by driving for success, but being consistent, it's that consistency that brings the biggest rewards. I hear you, man. Well, that's a, that's a piece of wisdom right there. We appreciate you sharing. Now, do you remember the first time you made a hundred in a day? 100,000 a day because, you know, I'm no longer a stockbroker. I'm a ganja man, certified. I, uh, I'm a CEO of Chronic Relief, just about the baddest cannabis LP in the nation. And I can tell you, you made $100,000 in a day selling some wheat. And that brings a smile to your face because in a day, it's different. Sir. It's different. So break us down, man. How did, how did it feel? What were you doing? You know, what do you think separates making it in a day versus making it in a year or in a month. It's the consistency. You 
have to have a system where you're growing cannabis at a rate that allows for you to have that amount of product on hand in a day. And so now to get a purchase order for $200,000, $300,000, $500,000, to get that type of purchase order now is something that I've worked on for a decade. So although it happens in a day, it doesn't necessarily happen in a day. It's like, you know, when you, when you hear what Steph Curry makes in a day, when you hear what Elon Musk makes in a day, before he owned Tesla, he built companies that we all know about. Like he built PayPal, like stuff you wouldn't, you don't even associate with the man. Everyone's like, yo, Tesla, he didn't just arrive and, hey, let me build a car. He was a serial entrepreneur. So when you look at his daily income, look at his resume, look at how many shots Steph Curry has taken in his driveway with his dad, Dell, yelling at him, but he's making those shots over and over and over again. So when you look at his paycheck today, you're like, wow, look what he makes in a day. But that's years of preparation. No matter what you do, if you're making 100,000 in any day, you've put the work in. Out of all the hundreds that you've made, which was your favorite and why? The first hundred, I mean, you literally wanna sit down. You want to sit down. You want to hold a knee brace. Like, you, you know, you feel the wow as you, as you, as you sit down and you con contemplate, yo, I just did this. I did this. But I'm, 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 as you could tell, like, I'm not, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm in my 49th year. And, you know, next summer I'm going to be 50, right? So I'm disappointed if I don't get to that million dollars in a day. A million in a day. I got to get there. And, and uh, what do you think it'll take to get there? My team at Chronic Relief, the baddest team in North America, pound for pound. There's no grow team, more focused, more dedicated, more hardworking. My crew, my dogs, men and women, politically correct dogs, okay? My dogs, them. When we lock in, we're going to get to a point, whether it's the province of BC, whether it's the province of Saskatchewan, whether it's the province of Ontario, or any of the other wonderful provinces in this country, they are going to make an order that surpasses $1 million in a day. And that day will be a big, big day. And when that happens, we'll film my another team episode. job will be to keep it consistent. You know? Yeah. That's the thing. So if you were to boil down all this experience, let's say you were to meet like the 16 year old Steven, what advice would you have for it? Learn that Wordsworth poem that my mother ingrained in my head. Heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. I cannot think of a domino game I missed. I cannot think of a party that I did not attend. And I grew up in the generation where we partied. We put partying on the map in this country. We were the sweat generation. We partied more nights than you guys could ever think, all of you young people. But when it was time to put the work in, the work got done. If you look into my eyes, you will see a drive that burns because I am about success. I am not about being average. I'm not doing the average things. And once you are locked in like that, nothing can hold you back. Nothing can hold you back. Maybe society's racism has prevented me from making a million dollars in a day by 40, but it won't stop me from doing it. And what's wrong with that? If you didn't make the NBA at 23, but you made it at 24, what is wrong with that? If you become a neurosurgeon at 31 instead of 29, what is wrong with that? If you didn't get your big break in acting until 35, what is wrong with that? Nothing. The only thing that's unacceptable in my world is not trying your best and not working your ass off and shout out to all the women who work hard but if you're a man and you are not wired to work something wrong with you get up and work i'm gonna care because 
You can start out as a fry, fry guy at McDonald's and you can get into their ownership apprenticeship program and you can make a million dollars a day as a McDonald's franchise owner, one of the most coveted jobs on this planet. There is nothing that can hold you back. Beautiful. Well, Stephen, we appreciate you, man. Thank Pick you so much yes, for taking the man. time. Hey, before we rock out of here, man, let us know where we could find you, where we could learn more about what you got going on. You can get at me at Stephen Conville, or you can get at my firm at Chronic Relief T.O. I'm telling you, our firm is going to do big things in 2023. We're going to be on the shelves in Ontario. We're going to be on the shelves of Saskatchewan. And we're going to be bringing that fire, old school, grimy, urban ganja. Hey, you know what? One actual, one more question. Sure, man. Sure. How did you end up going from banking to weed? Around 40, I said to myself, my name is Stephen Conville, and I reserve the right to not work for or work with an asshole. And if you are a recovering asshole, a born again asshole, an asshole in waiting, I don't wanna work for you and I don't wanna work with you. Well, that means I have to work for myself. As a stockbroker, you are quasi entrepreneurial, but you still work for a firm and that firm might or might not have assholes. And I just said, you know what? That's not my, not my run. So I started to sit and think, what is going to be the next big thing? I've missed the gold rush. I've missed software. I've missed hardware. I've missed oil, diamond. What's next? And then I started to think, this looks like this ganja thing is going to take off. So in 2013, I started my journey and uh, I have not looked back. Respect. We appreciate you. Thanks so much, Stephen. Thanks a lot. And you see, the cool thing that I learned from Stephen is that although it's 100K in a day, it's not really 100K in a day. And I think there's a lot of wisdom that we could pull from this episode. And I really, really, really enjoy the quote that his mom once told him. Now, the heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you gained as much wisdom as I did. And I hope you enjoyed meeting Stephen Conville as much as I did as well. Once again, I'm your host, Javon.ca, and we'll see you next week week on 100 ways to make 100k. Peace.